So this is 10 things that a lot of people ask when they first are starting with Sweet Dash because they don't know where to start or they don't know exactly how to do some basic things. This is not an in-depth video, so I'm just giving that precursor now. This is really just 10 highlighting things. We're gonna start with changing the native dashboard that comes into the platform into something more custom and that you like. So the first thing you wanna do is go to content and then you're gonna go to dashboards. By doing so, you're gonna see a few different options. You're gonna actually see a fallback and then the fallback, this is called a super admin. You're gonna see those two. You can actually change those if you choose or you can add a completely new one and you can start from scratch. This is gonna be where you are able to customize your own dashboard. And when you're just starting, this feels really overwhelming. So I would not advise you to do this now unless you have really a great creative sense. But if you don't, that is completely fine too. There are some templates and I'm gonna show you how to access that in a moment. But when you come into here, you have these widgets and you can add these blocks based on your like. So for me, I always like to start off with a good welcome box. You can change that welcome image you can also then update the information in this box and voila you can also add things like reporting and other things natively that you may want to see but if you're not interested in doing that just yet you can head over to this template library and you can select from a ton of different templates that are available you can just change the type over to dashboard now there's other templates that are here um, so you can choose what you like. However, these are going to be customizable ones that you can change or configure. And of course, people have um, been amazing and created some. So yeah, just feel free to do this if you like. All right. So one thing that I really like as well is the fact that there are native um, integrations. So we're going to head over to native integrations as number two. Native integrations are things that are natively connected as an external integration to Suite Dash. QuickBooks is one of them. So if you're using an accounting system such as QuickBooks, I would advise you to use this one. And you can actually use this to simply send all of your invoices from Suite Dash over to QuickBooks so that it's an easy two-way sync. The other thing is Zapier. So Zapier is used to trigger automations as well as do other things like connected to a system. So for example, if you would like anytime someone adds a new contact or if Sweet Dash gets a new contact, you wanna add them into your external space, like maybe ClickUp or Trello or Monday, you can do that through Zapier. You need to do a two-way sync of your events, tasks, appointments to your Google Calendar and back onto your Sweet Dash Calendar. Same thing with Microsoft Office Calendar. So I would advise you to set that up first as well as if you are using a one-way sync for an SMS to utilize Twilio, Twilio is an outside app that you would have to set up and then you can configure those details here. I like Zoom, I use Zoom, so if you are using Zoom, you can connect that natively as well. But if you're using one of the other systems that are um, connected to your Gmail or maybe your Outlook, you can utilize as well throughout the appointment types. So because we're talking about setting up appointments, a lot of people struggle to understand how to create appointment links. So inside of your calendar, you're gonna go over to appointment types and you're gonna first create an appointment itself. Now. The biggest thing that people misunderstand as well is that when you can like create a new appointment, you wanna make sure that you set this as active, all right? Once you set it as active, now it's an active link that people can see, as well as you want to make sure you create the auto create meeting, which will auto create the meeting link. You can connect either of the three, and this will be the way that you will get that meeting link on that calendar. But if you prefer to have just a phone call, or maybe you need to reach out to them individually to have a meeting, then you will not connect this feature at all. Now, when you're creating this, you will need to create a kickoff form in order to create this link. We're going to go over to forms because this is the third thing that, or the fourth thing rather, that people have questions on is what type of forms to use and what situations. So if you are trying to utilize a, um, a, a URL that can share your appointment link, 
I would advise you to use a kickoff form. Kickoff forms are going to be used to kick off workflows. So you can send proposals, you can send invoices, you can kick them off into the portal itself. Um, all of that can be done inside of a kickoff form, whereas a checkoff form, similar to a kickoff form, just allows you to take payment. So that's the big difference here. An update form is normally used for people who are known contacts and known contacts are individuals who are existing inside of the portal it does not have an external link which means that you will have to have them inside the portal to fill this out or do a form canning to send it out support ticket form is specifically for the support ticket feature and then a general form does not take any kind of like creation of custom fields however it does um, require for you to um, make sure that you add all the fields there you can use it for like surveys or things like that and you can use that as an external link as well and then the subscriber form is used for adding people to a marketing audience so now that we have that these all create contacts if not already created in your um, existing CRM but people will also struggle with understanding how to add contacts. So there are two ways. You can either do it based on this link. And remember that a company can be also known as an individual entity. And then a contact can be known as an individual entity as well. When clicking on either or, you're able to just simply just create them with all the details that you already have. Or maybe you clicked it from the left side, you would actually be able to click on CRM in your in your um, native default space, so say CRM, mine just says operations, and you can add them based on this plus button or click on the actual name of the item, and then you can simply just add them there. When adding a contact, remember that a lead has limited access to anything. If you are trying to have a contact to either send a message to them, proposal to them, invoice to them, you want to make sure that they are a prospect. With a prospect, you can actually send also the ability to join um, the, the portal you wanted them to. So that's something that you want to just realize and utilize it. Um, I love utilizing this feature to just simply add contacts in this way because I enjoy just making sure that I have all the information done at one time. All right, so we're gonna jump into sending a message because sometimes people have the confusion about sending messages too. Sending a message is pretty easy. This is not too async with your internal uh, messaging space, meaning that it does not too async with your Gmail or your Outlook. However, if you have an existing contact within the system, you can either send it to an, your staff or you can send it within um, to your clients or a company or to a circle. And that can be done as well with a CC. I like sending CCs, but I, I like sending um, attachments to emails as well. So you can also send attachments here. And I love also making sure that my message has a signature that is predestined because sometimes I don't want to have to keep adding my signature. To do so, you can just use what they call is a canned response. Canned responses are very useful. You can make them as easy and simple as you like. You can also do something as great as color coding them so you can keep up with them. I used to do this very... <laughs> This is, I'm laughing because I did this a very long time ago within my process. I would send custom um, canned emails, and this is a very cute one. So if you wanted to, anytime you add that custom um, canned response, you can just add the subject or you can add it without the response and you can also customize the subject. But what I've done is because I know that my signature is something that will never change, I pre-added into the uh, message before it's sent, so I have that auto add. But if you ever wanted to, if someone responded and you have a 24 or 48 hour response time and you wanted to send them that auto reply, you can do that as well by creating a can and then selecting that button. So I think those are really easy things to do. One last thing I wanna show you in your messages is that sometimes you wanna restrict the contacts to only sending it to their coordinator, meaning that they can only directly contact their coordinator or a designated staff member. You can do that by selecting this button or selecting a designated staff member based on the settings that you wanna place. So it gives them that restriction to not message out any of the team and only speaking directly to who they need to. I wanna also discuss what will now be number eight, which is your marketing emails. 
So your marketing emails are going to be over here inside of marketing, and they're going to go over to campaigns. So when you think about marketing emails, you will think possibly about like MailChimp or MailerLite. It is similar, but this is more custom. It's what you see is what you get, or you're doing it based on a complete um, coding. And I don't know if you know coding, but you can always just customize it the way you want to. And this is how you can do that. You can simply add images or choose from images that you've already selected, or you can add a URL to add an image as well. It will load in, you can customize the size, and it will be the easiest thing for you to adjust. You can also put some text in here as well. I don't think my image wants to load. I don't think my image wants to load, but we're gonna go ahead and save and send. So when you save and send, what happens is that this will also, yeah, I think because my image didn't want to load, it did this. And let's just make sure it does what it needs to do. And when you do that, you can simply customize the subject if you wanted to. And you can then go ahead and save and send. And this will then preview the image as well as the text that you had in here. And you can test this out to any email that you'd like. Um, or you can simply just send it out to the campaign audiences that you have. So you can send it to multiple audiences or just one at a time. This also can be scheduled and sent. So I think that's pretty cool to use. Now, of course, I would love to talk about two other things and that will end out this video, which would be the custom menus on this left side and then custom fields. So for custom menus, a lot of people are always wondering if you can add your custom links. The answer is yes. You can add custom links as well as any type of shortcut to a specific feature within Sweet Dash by utilizing this custom menu feature. I love to use this for tax clients when they're asking for, for example, um, the native space for like quick links if they wanted to um, do the irs.com or they wanted to specifically get like a specific link for someone. So let's say, let we call this IRS. The thing that always natively happens is that it will jump to the bottom. You can move it up in any direction that you want to and you can see it moves in real time. Now, as you can see, it doesn't really have like that menu bar at the, the, the left of it because you can select any of these options here. And when you do, it then will customize it as well so that it can show up on this left side. What I like as well is creating sub menus because maybe they are wanting to get direct links to multiple things at a time. So you can make this like a client um, link and this can be shared ironically to anyone. Like you can literally customize it, right? It's, it's beautiful. Um, using this manage visibility feature allows you to customize who can see it. So if you only want clients in a specific circle to see this, you will just say circle men uh, menu item visibility. I don't know why that was a tongue tie. And you can hide or show to any type of client you want to. Let's say that you want to show it to every PRM client, but you don't want to show it to any step one person you can do that as well. And it will override any priority. So meaning it would override any circles priority that is already hidden here, which is amazing. Lastly, it is so amazing that you can create custom fields for forms and other functionalities within the system. But sometimes it's even better to know where you can find that custom field in the future. So I found out a better way to do that, which is by using the categories. So when creating a custom field, you have all of these beautiful um, custom field options that you can use for usage, but then you get tied up into understanding where they're linked to. So I've recently found out a beautiful workaround by adding custom field categories. So when you do this, I would name this as the form name that you're creating it for. And then you would just simply go back to manage custom fields. And then you would select the custom field that you want to link to this category. And then you simply just add it there. And so now when you're ever looking for a certain form, you can say, okay, what are all the fields on the inquiry form? 
I hope this was helpful. If there are things that maybe you were going so crazy down the rabbit hole and cannot figure it out, please ask me and hopefully I can help you um, or help anyone else to not have to go so dark in the rabbit hole. And thank you for watching.